Uh, Black Magic doesn't want to hear my commentary from that game. That makes me sad. Trying to look through and keep up. Oh man, Bot went a little nuts earlier today. Like, everybody is streaming. Although, yeah, pretty special delay on that one. Didn't announce it until we were almost an hour in. While we're waiting between games, Morgan, are you here? Oh, yes, sorry. I've been on mute. Explain it. I was just I outraged was just right that somebody was saying that come on Game Slayer I voted for you I was like what? <laughs> Who in their right mind would possibly vote for Game Slayer? I don't know somebody who's gonna lose apparently Alright <sighs> I've got the go ahead I'd have taken that bet so Let's go ahead and hop into this one I think we're on round number four? Yes four Yes the final round before we go to the final round, the final round yes. <laughs> uh, I set them up, you knock them out of the park. Occasionally, at least. Like, sometimes you have to actually try and do it. At least a little bit. Oh. Alright. Hello, everyone, and welcome to game number four in our series FFA tournament. This time we've got Black Magic Game Slayer Polina and Revolting Peasant competing for us, and no prices decided to actually show up to play today. And Morgan is still here with us doing commentary. Well, for prices, everything is quite low. Yeah, I mean, forty dollar glass, forty dollar chems, labs at the colony, hundred dollar electronics. What do we actually have for resources? Uranium is looking unpleasant. Lots of high iron tiles, but of course, none of them decided to hang out together today. Always a bit sad. Yeah. There's core samples, and though. We could see some core sample action later on. That's true. Core samples should pretty easily clean up that, that difficult iron situation. There's definitely a scavenger location or two as well. Game Slayer going for the scientific found. Oh, is into three food? Yeah. yeah going right into food. Eight. I I like that. I like that a lot. It's high risk, but that's it. It is a bit high risk. It's not as va it's a lot more difficult to start with this than it is to start with the triple steel. But given that the triple steel wasn't available this game, and maybe you can push into it after. Yeah, he's going to core sample, isn't he? Core sample on that iron. Put his three steel down there. That's what it has to be. Well, yeah. I'd love somebody to come and make a solar panel or something just to cut him off. That'd be so funny. Yeah, my big concern about this, though, is just how how expensive farms are to build, quite frankly. Because if we look at farms, it's 20 steel, 10 glass. And so you're losing 30 of your upgrade resources instead of putting a steel mill down, which costs 20 iron. Yeah, but he, he wasn't in the position... It's the nukes. He's seen the nukes and he's decided the scientific long term is the one to do it. So he's going to say, right, I'll take the short term pain and pain it's going to be. Certainly. He has got the upgrade. He needs to take it. That's good. And he can honestly just throw down steel now, I think. And I would certainly encourage him to do so. And yeah. then get the core sample, just try and hit, hit the iron afterward. Well, he, he can't afford a core sample, so he's going to have to... There comes one steel mill. Iron mill? Oh, okay. I mean, you could always say that he put an iron mine down and two steel. Yeah, that would have been an option as well. He's going to choose to secure the high aluminum, though. I don't hate that. Ugh, really? No claims available on the market. I mean, you know, aluminum, having one aluminum tile is important. Black mm. Magic doesn't have... Or no, he's got two next to his base. I hate it. I'm going to call... I, I'm going to call it now. He's... Death spiraled out. He's gone. Who's death spiraled out? Game Slayer. Game Slayer. He's dead to debt. 
<laughs> I called it. Called it. Called it. All right. All right. We'll see if your, you know, clairvoyance actually comes true at this point. I think it will. If you wow. actually have the gift, I'll give it to you. But oh, revolting peasant looks like he's in all sorts of problems. Yeah, revolting peasant. This is typically never the way you actually want to start the game. This aluminum might pull through for him, but long term, once again, you have two aluminum tiles. Oh. And that's just a difficult place to be. That's solar panels at best. Oh, Polina. Yeah, the other thing that I'm nervous about here for revolting peasant is the fact that his iron is next to silicon, both of them. Like any any place he could put a core sample, which is already ten thousand dollars, by the way, apparently everybody loves the core sample of this game. Yeah. Every place he could put it might hit silicon instead. And that's a big risk for him. I suppose well, at least. I really like this move from Game Slayer, though, going ahead and using the core sample on a tile that he can't claim yet, just in case anybody else wants it. <laughs> He's offering it up. Yep. Please come and steal my lovely iron tile. I don't know, it's a bit far away. I think most people are sorted for iron now, so low risk, but I still call the death spiral. I'm always really concerned when I'm up at 17,000 death, personally, but, you know. Mm. We'll see, we'll see. Somebody take the network virus. You guys are driving me insane. Come on. Like, it's a network virus. It's just a free kill a goon squad in the late game. Just take it. For, what was that? Like, 4,000 death? Just grab it. Come on. Let's stick it in the bank for later. Guys, everybody in chat right now, look, just because you don't need an item right now doesn't mean you don't need it. If it's three, four thousand debt, something tiny, just, just take the item. It's alright, it's gonna be okay. Wow! Uh, Game Slayer up to three, and up at three, Black Magic up at three. And Revolting Peasant has That's just got up to two! Well, he made it there at least. He's gonna be able to get these steel mills down. He gets. Oh. Lots. He's building them on the silicon. Oh, yuck. Yeah. I'm a little surprised you didn't try for this last core sample before choosing to go ahead and build these steel mills, but at least for him, steel's expensive right now and iron really isn't. But he's, he's got a core sample. Why is he keeping that core sample? Do you think he's going to try and go for water or something? Oh, somebody popped a I spy down? Honestly, I have no idea. Let's see. Spy down onto Game Slayer, followed very quickly by a power surge. I like it. I mean, he is scientific, so Game Slayer probably not going to be too disappointed in this, but just a nice little freeze onto those powerful nuclear plants right now. That's it. Keeps him on his toes, doesn't it? Yeah. And everybody already had seen that Black Magic had defended himself. And Black Magic right now, using one of those strategies we've been seeing players use more and more and more lately against power surges in particular, sacrificing a little bit of adjacency bonus. You sacrifice about half a building's worth of production with this. Where you go for a line instead of a triangle. And that allows you to plant one goon squad and guarantee that only one of those tiles can be hit at any given moment by a power surge. So, just an interesting little tool. That's a very intentional decision out of Black Magic. Yeah. And something we've been seeing players do more and more lately. Well, those three solar panels are magnets for Black Market. Yeah, ever you've got them down there. Uh... People love attacking. So oh, god, yeah. And with the price of power there, I mean, that would be a right... <coughs> pain in the backside if you got hit. Yep, and we can already see that it paid off quite well for Black Magic, the idea that only two of his, or only one panel was disabled, as opposed to two, if he had set up in a in a triangle. Yeah, otherwise it would be the other way round, wouldn't it? He'd be 66% down instead of 33. And in fact, Black Magic, as our expansive player, gonna be the first one to manage to get on up to HQ level 4. He's played it well. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it a lot getting things done. Polina seems to be struggling to actually pull in enough money to get to the upgrade, combined with the, the slightly aggressive black market actions against Game Slayer in particular. Wow, Game Slayer going for power surge on Polina, and that ain't gonna work out. That's <laughs> coming straight back on him. Yep, but once again, scientific, it's annoying, kind of a pain, probably not gonna kill you. Mm, no, you're probably right, it's not gonna kill him, but it's gonna be irritating. It's gonna allow his debt to to go up a little bit. He's at 50k now. He's halfway to spiral. He's 
got a 1,000 aluminum stockpile. Ugh. Just get out of it. Come just on. Just literally scrap them and put down solar panels. Solar panels, yeah. He's got, got some silicon coming in. If all else fails, just drop solar panels. Yeah. It's going to save him money in the long run. I mean, he's losing. Wow. He's breaking even on these with the shipping because fuel is so well, expensive. This is aggressive. That's the word I'm going to go with once again. We're on the way to slant drilling at HQ level 2. <coughs> Which, I mean, slant drilling... Ouch. It's going to have some value for him. No so, doubt about that, but the question is, how do you pull back from HQ level 2 when everybody else is all the way up at 4, playing he gets hit by a nuke under that uranium? That's not going to be pleasant. No. Long term. No. Uranium's one of those funny ones. Yeah, but Polina, one thing to note about Polina is that there's no good access to silicon, so you can't really consistently be able to move into solar panels, so knocking out the, the close uranium source certainly is going to make power way more difficult. Meanwhile, Game Slayer, he does need to keep his own uranium source around. Yeah. Because he's just got water coming in for his, but probably going to be okay. Nice identification of, by Game Slayer to use the water for his nuclear plants. A lot of people just seem to forget that nuclear plants consume water. And they don't bother to use their bonus as a scientist, so this is good work by him. And that is something I always forget, that they use water. Yeah. Just, just a nice little thing, and sometimes those little things can make a big difference. Game Slayer actually picks up transparent aluminum, something you almost never see anybody acquire. But well, it's going to be good, good for him, because that means he can use the nice cheap aluminium yeah. to uh, sort his glass out. Oh, finally, we got some solar panels down from the peasant. Well, that's good. That's Just about in time for the time. solar flare and power to be at $30. Oh, that's unfortunate. But, alright, still back at HQ2. I honestly think that you've picked up the slant drilling that you absolutely needed. Now you just have to scrap the patent lab and go back into steel. Mm-hmm. Like, you cannot afford... When you have a to some total of four potentially functional tiles right now because these solar panels just don't count. They can't do anything effective for you at all. Those tiles are useless. So you've got, no, five tiles, and you're sacrificing one of them to do nothing and just sit on a patent lab? That ain't gonna work. No. He's lucky that he's at level two, otherwise people might take an interest in him. I think they just feel sorry for him at the moment. Man, I'd take an interest in him right now. Are you kidding me? Just go ahead and grab that if you can... If you've got enough of a lead to make it happen, if I'm Black Magic right now, I'm genuinely looking that direction and being like, do I really want to push to five, or do I just want some extra stock value? It would suit Black Magic very well if you could actually do that. The other option you have is just to pick up five and threaten to finish him at any given moment. That way, you know, potentially later on, you can just grab everything that's left over for two extra claims if this spiral keeps continuing like it has been for Revolting Peasant. Mm. Cooking the books, though, it looks like. Trying to keep himself alive. Got himself ah. back up to that D-Bond rating. Well, yeah. Good luck to him, that's what I say. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's probably the best summation possible right now. Nanotechnology about to come out for Game Slayer. Meanwhile, Polina's working away on the same. Not going to get to it, of course. That scientific advantage really kicking in for Game Slayer, combined with the laboratories his patent lab is next to. Well, Game Slayer there, he could go to HQ5 if he wishes, but... A little bit dangerous, but it is a little available bit. to him. I wouldn't recommend it. Not with Black Magic, he's got a little bit too much cash at the moment. Yeah. Well... Oh, Game Slayer's gonna die. No, no, he didn't hit it. No, that was Revolting Peasant getting the three. I got confused. Now Game Slayer's... Come on, Black Magic. Oh, he didn't upgrade, did he? Game Slayer's got enough to defend himself anyway. Whatever, some of it's wrapped up in the patent lab. He'd miss it. I'd like to say, he needs some pressure on him, True. quite honestly. I was just hoping he'd die. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, think we, I was hoping he would die to death about ten minutes well, ago. Look, look. You made that call when he was at 4,000 debt. I don't... That was clearly just a hope and a prayer, rather than... Well... A is scientific, B it's Game Slayer. I think everybody would have made that call. Game Slayer. 
he made this switch into just full-on water resources scrapped out of the nuclear plants and you can see how well that's working for him right now nobody is able to keep up with this scientific cash at the moment and i especially love 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 i really hope game slayer did this i didn't actually see it when it went down there's a freeze right now onto black magic solar condensers uh, I know it was Polina that attacked them. Oh, that's just handing money over to Game Slayer. Yep. Game Slayer uh, is looking in a very nice position at the moment. Yeah, I mean, nobody else can easily make these resources for the insane profits Game Slayer can. I mean, we look at Black Magic and it's like, our reactors look kind of okay. Those are about, no, $60 a piece for the reactors, less than 100 for the farms. We come back over to Game Slayer, he's pulling in over 200 on average per <laughs> time. Yep. That's a different game these guys are playing from each other, let me tell you. Well, yeah, I mean, Game Slayer's sitting there, he's thinking, i got six grand nukes I can play with later on. People are going to be tapped out for their claims. I mean, if he just... I mean, well, Black Magic's slightly immune to it, but Polina, a couple of well-placed nukes, and... Game over. Why has our robotic player been the one to to go ahead and get into two pleasure domes and virtual reality. That's just a little silly. Game Slayer grabs teleportation. That's going to have some value for him, especially against these pirates. Got a little carbon coming in. Uranium. Aluminum. Works out. Yeah. It's not ideal, I wouldn't have thought, but... I will say, long term, Game Slayer may need to consider upgrading his own Uranium might even need to consider defending it. Nobody's bothered with that yet, but there is the potential that any one of these players could have secured a significant amount of silicon and then chosen to make power very, very difficult for everyone else this game. That hasn't happened yet, but the option was there. Nuke comes out into Game Slayer's Carbon. Mm. He can always just move, move those into chem refineries if he needs to, though. It's not going to be the end of the world for him. No. I mean, I'm quite surprised that he doesn't. I'd prefer, if he, when he's got teleportation, I'd much prefer my, my chems over there. Yeah, I mean, carbon also looks extremely valuable, but after that first nuke comes through, mm. it's just not looking near as, near as pleasant. It's, it's not, is it? Liquid batteries, alright, that has some value. I mean, Revolting Peasant, kind of pushing back into this. Solar panels are expensive again, Revolting Peasant just made the decision, alright, I have slant drilling, I am going to make steel, and well... Steel's proven, proven pretty nice since Polina rotated out of it in particular. There's been a lot of steel being bought up this game. Hmm. He could do... Well, if steel keeps keeps its price, then it wouldn't be too bad, but... He's going to struggle in the water. Life support resources. And that is a lot of value put on liquid batteries, but I don't think I can blame Black Magic for it. I think it's essential that he has him. Yeah, absolutely. The biggest thing about this game in so many ways right now is the fact that Black Magic is relying on ice. And Game Slayer cannot fight the ice with nukes. It's just not an option for him. He can knock down Polina's water just fine, but it doesn't work on the ice. And so securing liquid batteries makes absolutely certain that Black Magic has a consistent source of water. And he kind of combats Game Slayer's scientific tendencies and his qualities because the water is the big, big thing that Game Slayer was trying to work off of. He only has a very small amount of carbon and no silicon coming in at all. And Game Slayer's moved into an off-world market. Game Slayer, why are you just throwing the game away? I well, world, actually. it's kind of okay. It's alright, it's oxygen yeah. is obscenely priced. I mean, this off-world market is also obscenely priced, if we're being honest, but... Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, it is. $150,000 off-world markets. I mean, it's going to take him a good five minutes to pull this back and be making a serious profit off of it, but after that... And this game's looking like it's going to go on for a while. Yeah. Possibly it was a... I don't know. Downside? Mm. There's dynamite. Yeah. That is true. And goons are expensive. Yeah, goons are expensive. He should. He does have thinking machines. That'll help. But once again, do you want to be that one guy with an off-world market in a game with dynamite? Seriously. Not particularly, no. <laughs> That's why. That is not going to stop. Because there are also spies available. Yeah. Not on that market just yet, but they can pretty easily show up. It's... And everybody can watch for the Goon Squad purchase as well. Oh, and of course, there is the giant target on your back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Forget that detail. 
I avoid the yeah. That magic looks in a reasonably good position. Yeah, you know, I mean, just guy, go ahead and buy the guy who built the off-world market that's reasonably profitable and just obscenely expensive. Works for me. Yeah, I think if the player that manages to take Game Slayer may well win the game. Yeah, the question is, does Polina want to get involved in this at all, or does Polina make the the bold play of going after the cheap person instead and try and acquire, acquire that? I think you've got to go, she's got to go for Peasant, I think. So you go after Peasant, potentially attacking Black Magic along the way, because Power Surges can be aggressive, then be functional there, let Black Magic keep blowing up Game Slayer's off-world. Those two fight it out, just what, slow him down before the purchase? Game Slayer, are you serious right now? He's not. Not a second off world. Yeah, he is. Oh, oh, oh wow. That's. That's it's bold. Like, well, if one of them's gonna get blown up anyway, I may as well have two. <laughs> He's not using his hacker array, is he, at all? He's put that hacker array down, not using it. What a waste. You think so? Well, I mean, look at his pile of cash. It's stupid. It's stupid how much money he's making off of reactors, off of farms, off of steel mills. It's just nuts. Oh, God, yeah. On top of that, he still has the chems flying in. I mean... <sighs> but he has to pay a lot of money to repair his off-worlds. He does. I mean... I don't even know what the repair cost is right now because I haven't caught it yet, but we're talking what, 25 glass, 25 electronics, and 100 steel per? Yeah, so 12 12, yeah, probably looking 35 40k a time. Okay, I'll let you do the math there. But Very roughly. One more dynamite flying out. So if you have 12 and a half. Ooh, Polina, I do not like that at all. Polina hits uh, Game Slayer's Pleasure Dome with with some dynamite. Is that even a Pleasure Dome? I think it actually is. Yeah, it is. Yes, yes Packer it is. is over here. Yes, but, yeah, I mean, I don't think that using a dynamite on a Pleasure Dome is really acceptable right now when these off-world markets are just consistently being rebuilt. No, nobody got Game Slayer there. It's just ridiculous. I mean, Black Magic... Is... Oh, yeah, Game Slayer is super dumb. Black Magic, why have you bought into Revolting Peasant right now? It's driving me nuts. I mean, I guess it was probably cheap when he acquired it. Revolting Peasant might be able to raise his stock price. Black Magic could sell out of it if necessary to finish off Game Slayer. But Game Slayer, since he's being forced to perpetually repair these things, he just cannot actually develop a stockpile. No. Yeah, absolutely right. <laughs> and there another one goes. Ah, uh, 27. That's what it said right there. Uh, I managed to barely catch it. Off-world prices, oxygen, most, most people are shipping, is $740 a shipment. So you're looking about 45k profit. There we go. Who's that? Right. Fulton Peasant Polina by Polina. Yep. Wow. That was a big and boost to the stock price. Oh yeah, 50. Nothing to be upset about. I mean, Black Magic's almost there already because he does have two revolting peasants as well. So Polina's... Not out of the woods just yet, because Black Magic is still barreling down on Game Slayer. I would consider, if I were Polina, selling out of Game Slayer stock. Well, Game Slayer is going to be an obscene money spinner for whoever buys him. Yeah, for sure. I mean, two off worlds, and he's also scientific with the price of food, the price of oxygen, price of chems. I am. Curious, do you do you start buying into dynamite and try and save some up to knock those off worlds down when Game Slayer becomes a subsidiary, if Game Slayer becomes a subsidiary, which he should, but Black Magic. Yeah, he should get there. He's not quite there yet. So I don't know. I mean nine. I mean he's only sixty off. That that should happen. Realistically. Game Slayer is still nowhere close to Black Magic. Black Magic's gonna get to that. Realistically, what Paulina needs to do is sell her, sell five of her stock, and buy Game Slayer. Buy Game Slayer. <laughs> oh, that would be fantastic. Actually, that's that's the word that I have for that. That would be fantastic. I mean, that is pretty much the only route that I could see. So, because I mean, you buy half a Game Slayer, you get half a Black. Well, you get half, you get a bit of Black, black Magic. There you go. 
Come on, Paulina, buy those shares. Buy those damn shares, quick. Well, I mean, she's got to wait for wait for the cooldown. There's an eight-second cooldown there where she can't buy the shares yet. But now she can get into it. Is there? Oh. Yeah, because of because of how stock was, the reason those shares disappeared in part was how stock was being divided on yeah. the buy from Black Magic, and like there wasn't enough cash, and it gets a little difficult. But yeah, she she legitimately was not allowed to. Uh, she did. Okay. It's a good pickup, though. Now, the concern is that Game Slayer is potentially going to be a very powerful subsidiary once these launches have gotten going. But the thing is, Revolting Peasant has been a subsidiary for a very long time and has been making Polina a pretty significant amount of money because he's also a scientist. That's pretty tasty. I mean, 1500 a second, that's not to be sneezed at. And especially, I mean, those solar panels, once you get that debt out of the way, the solar panels are amazing, which is obviously what happens when you get a subsidiary coming into play. So, yeah. Revolting Peasant... Not a particularly strong contender in the game, but once he got purchased up, certainly became a significant factor for Polina potentially closing this out. Well, I'm going to say Polina's going to be winning this one. Yeah, it's looking pretty good, i got to say. Yeah, I reckon just the subsidiary is going to drive her over the line. Mm -hmm. Strong, strong subsidiary. Game Slayer, let's see how much cash he's making at this point. Alright, 1200 over to Black Magic. So the subsidiary income is about even at this point. It is, isn't it? Polina slightly got the edge. But slightly, but only slightly. The big thing that Polina has, of course, is the fact that Polina got to the buy so much faster than Black Magic was able to. And this is entirely Black Magic's fault. This is why I think he made a huge mistake earlier in this game. And so that let Revolting Peasant's stockpile of cash start building up and building up and building up and made him the strong subsidiary that he turned into much, much faster. Now, Game Slayer has caught up. His stockpile is caught up. He's going to pass soon on the back of these off-world markets. But Polina was able to develop such a huge cash stockpile on the back of that subsidiary and get so much of this stock bought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that was um, that was a nice move. Yeah, if Polina wins this game, I think it's entirely just the error on Black Magic's part of buying into Revolting Peasant. And Polina, just going for it, says, nope, I'm going to take you down right here, right now. See how that goes. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right call, but... Especially because Black Magic's stock price is going to be going up. Yeah, the more... I think she's probably just got to leave it at the moment and just, just wait. I mean, Black Magic's... He's got a cut cash, cash pile, but... I don't, I don't know if selling out of that stock was the correct decision. That I was don't. really your big advantage. I, that feels problematic to me. I don't think you can sell any more stock. Wow. <laughs> you can't. I can't. No. Hmm. I think Pali. It's 150 though. Black Magic still needs a good two, three hundred. Yeah, three hundred. Yeah. I, I still think Polina has this, but yeesh, I don't know if that was the right call. Oh, Polina's got it, no question. But I wouldn't have sold so many stock. I think those yeah, those last two that were. Right. That was a little bit pushing the boat a little bit too far. 95 to 75. Come on, get there. 97, 98. Oh, Polina's got it, no question. I just want it to happen. I just want it to be over. There we go, there it is. There it is. Alright. That's why we don't help our opponents to get to, get to some <laughs> purchases faster. <laughs> we certainly don't. Wow, that was a good, good game. That was really good to watch, that was. Everybody, well, we we wrote Polina off, didn't we? But that buy in re re revolting peasant. Yeah, the revolting peasant purchase was pretty fantastic. Yeah, that paid off. So I didn't think it was going to pay off that well. I really didn't. But high power, high glass, obscene oxygen, just really helped out. All right, kids, what have we learned today about awkward markets on series? I would say that off-world markets are 99 times out of 100 the wrong thing to do. You know, I would tend to agree with that assessment. It seems all right by me. Just you know. I think I've, I think we've watched a lot of Stop games. How I, I think there's what is there one game that we've seen that off-world markets were the right move? And how many months ago was that? It was so I, I think there was a game where that did happen at some point. Mm. There was one, because I think we commentated at the time, it was just like, wow, off-world markets. Oh, yeah, that actually works this time. <laughs> it worked for once. What's going yeah. on? But not this time. 
Uh, no, not today. Not today. Yeah. Right. No. We, we really expected better against though, didn't we? No, not really. I did. I, I didn't. I, I didn't think but he'd be so stupid as to go to off worlds. Oh boy. Offworlds were the correct the choice. They were not in any way, shape, or form the correct choice. Who's arguing Offworlds? Game Slayers. Game right? Slayers, obviously, yes. You lost! <laughs> you blatantly didn't do the right strategy. Offworlds were so blatantly wrong, I can't even. I'm not even arguing about it. No. I'll ban you if you keep that up. That's all. <laughs> uh, the launches were 45k profits off about. 740 price. The initial costs, much less the repairs. <laughs> no, no, that's it. When you factor the repairs in, oh, good lord. Let's move along. He sold 300k off worlds. So, if we say his off worlds costs 150 a piece, then. He lost money because he had to buy the oxygen to ship it. Lost money before you even talk about repairs. Exactly. And lost the production on the tile. Your scientist, your tile production is through the roof. Your off-worlds are expensive. Just... Exactly. Oh well. <laughs> take a breath, Sultar, take a breath. <laughs> what are you saying? They cost... They cost me very little. Oh, okay. Nice, well, <laughs> if 300k is a little amount, any chance I can borrow half a million? I'll pay you back, honest. Okay, let's move along. I'm back. Hello, welcome back. So we got in we don't ever see it yet. Well we got two back, we got Paulina, Death Tacticus, and I imagine we're gonna have macros. Alright, yeah, it looks like all the scores have been updated. They're just two, two, two and three. Two back. Yeah, okay, so we'll just beat those guys. Yeah, two back in the lead because well, he's won three games. Yeah, he lost his fourth round, finally. That was a bit of a surprise, honestly, because he was just kind of blazing through everyone. Yeah, he done incredibly well. Mm-hmm. He's you know. really, really stepped it up. Seems to know what he's doing on series for the most part. Who did he fall to? He fell to DT. All right, fair enough. Yeah, that's understandable. Macro's continuing to put in work, too, though. I mean, he picked up round three and four. Yeah, Macro's is a solid player. Certainly, certainly is. He's given me a scare or two before. Nice to see Polina in the final round as well, though. Polina not often participating in the tournaments, and so, you know. Ah, well, does a lot of organizing of them, doesn't she? So it's. Exactly. Nice that she gets a chance to play for once. I have to put in all that hard work in as well. Because it has got to be a hard job. Organising everything, getting everybody in the right place at the right time. Why do you think I don't do it anymore? Because it's a pain in the backside. Exactly. Yeah, it's much easier. Turn up at 8 o'clock, talk for a little bit, and then disappear. Thanks. Precisely. That's, that's it, the way we do it around it, here. That's, it's, it'd just be better if there was a check to be handed over at the end of it, but <laughs> there we go. Come on. <laughs> kind of everything. Not even a free t-shirt, or a hoodie. Yes, Soren. Yes, yeah, Soren. Where's Morgan's free t-shirt? Or a hoodie. Other people got hoodies. Other game developers gave hoodies. 
And what do I get? All I get is a mention in the credits. PB got a t-shirt. What? PB got a t-shirt? Well, because he won the first turn. <laughs> to be fair, I got a co I got a free copy of the game for at that point, so, you know. Well, I suppose I got one of those as well, but... Man, that was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, it was a long time ago. I suppose, yeah. Soren's looked after us, so... It's fair, it's fair. It is fair. And I'm just glad his game's turned out so good. That's true. It is a fantastic game. And a fantastic, oh, fantastic community as well. Well, that's the advantage of the community being small, right? Although we've had people starting to show up in it who are a little bit less fantastic, if we're being honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the way it goes, and at least we can make fun of them around here. Well, if you can't have a laugh, then... Yeah, exactly. You might as well give up now. Gosh, we got a door... have we got door fields? What's going on? Where is this list? Do we have... let's see, we're looking at... Chewback, Polina, DT, and Macros is what I'm seeing. That's what I'm seeing as well. We, we don't have an actual list yet for this. So. Mm. Yeah, I think we're all waiting, aren't we, for who is supposed to be where? Yeah, yeah, that hasn't been listed specifically. It's just easy to work out group A most of the time. Yeah. The people who have won. Yep. I'm not sure where Adderfield is going to end. Whoa! Alright, everything broke. <laughs> broke it all. Oh it's dear. It's all gone. It's all dead. Uh oh. We killed it. Back to spreadsheet class for you. This is why I don't try and use these things, because I know that I'll just break them. Yeah. Much better to let everybody else just handle that. Exactly. Yeah, Adderfield I think is going to be in either group 2 or 3. I wasn't able to figure out if which of those immediately. Uh, Adorfield. And now everything's broken, so I can't figure it out anyway. Yeah. We announced the seed? No, no seed as yet. So we should have in our group two back, Paulina, Death Tacticus, and Macros 42. That is official. Yep. Yeah, so the Dora Field. Hop it. Two back. So we need to get DT. Oh, we got DT. Yeah, we've got DT. We're just missing macros. Giving Adderfield a minute to it's for him to see the message. Especially because we we have to wait for all the rest of the groups anyway, so we don't start early. <laughs> DT says you can stay, Adderfield. Uh, DT's apparently scared to face macros. You heard it here first. Uh, that didn't surprise me. Yeah. I've always known DT to be a coward when it comes to other strong off-world players, and this just confirms it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I've always had a sneaking suspicion. Yep, yep. Definitely, always knew it. Definitely confirmed. I think Dorafield is going to be Group C. Although that's unconfirmed as yet. Yeah, I thought we had, like, three players with one win apiece, and so one of those others was going to get put in in B, but I don't know which one. Well, Group B is looking like Rahi, Black Magic, Game Slayer, and one other. Yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> Undecided as yet. 